Land reclamation has been carried out along the coast of Tokyo Bay since the Meiji period. Areas along the shore with a depth of fewer than 5 meters are simplest to carry out landfills, and sand from the floor of Tokyo Bay is used for these projects. The topography of the shoreline of Tokyo Bay differs greatly from that of the pre-modern period due to ongoing land reclamation projects. Tokyo Bay includes about 249 square kilometers of reclaimed land area in 2021. Aggregate household waste production is enormous in Greater Tokyo, there is little room for traditional garbage disposal sites, waste is rigorously sorted at the household, much of it is turned into ash and further recycled into Bay Landfill. A conventional sales are when the home is owned outright or the seller owes less on the mortgage than fair market value. Conventional sales involve quicker transactions between both parties, unlike foreclosures, short sales and probate sales, we typically recommend conventional sales for our buyers, especially first-time home buyers, to help them avoid the complications they could run into when dealing with distressed properties or probate sales. For a majority of buyers who are looking to purchase and move into their dream home as soon as possible, conventional sales are the way to go. Oftentimes, distressed properties can take many months for the seller's bank to approve an offer or for a court date to bet set in the case of a probate sale. The Knowledge Challenge invites proposers to submit proposals for research activities aimed at improving our basic understanding of entrepreneurs and the levers, tools and methods that can advance entrepreneurship in the United States. The Knowledge Challenge is open to proposers conducting research in universities and academic institutions, laboratories, companies, nonprofit organizations, and as individuals. Collaborations between academic researchers and entrepreneurs, entrepreneurship support programs and other entrepreneurial ecosystem builders are welcome. The Knowledge Challenge may grant up to $400,000 annually for project teams, up to $150,000 annually for individual researchers, including hiring contract or research assistants, and up to $30,000 annually for students or student teams or doctoral researchers. Understanding Migration was conceived in response to numerous requests from educators and curriculum specialists concerning the presentation and discussion of issues related to human migration in the social studies classroom. What are the reasons that large groups of people have found themselves moving from place to place? What effects does this movement have? And most importantly, how can such a fluid and nebulous concept be presented in a classroom in an easy-to-follow manner with clear lesson objectives and outcomes? Regional case studies were chosen to address these, and other, essential questions. Where possible, we have used primary source documents to present the information in each case study. In every recession, marketers find themselves in poorly charted waters because no two downturns are exactly alike. However, in studying the marketing successes and failures of dozens of companies as they've navigated recessions from the 1970s onward, we've identified patterns in consumers' behavior and firm strategies that either propel or undermine performance. Companies need to understand the evolving consumption patterns and fine-tune their strategies accordingly, during recessions. Of course, consumers set stricter priorities and reduce their spending. As sales start to drop, Businesses typically cut costs, reduce prices, and postpone new investments. Marketing expenditures in areas from communications to research are often slashed across the board, but such indiscriminate cost-cutting is a mistake, although it's wise to contain costs, failing to support brands or examine core customers' changing needs can jeopardize performance over the long term. Companies that put customer needs under the microscope 
take a scalpel rather than a cleaver to the marketing budget, and nimbly adjust strategies, tactics, and product offerings in response to shifting demand are more likely than others to flourish both during and after a recession. Secure financial messaging services provider Swift said today that it has expanded the GPI tracker system to help banks track their global transactions at all times, keeping full vigil on the payments activity. Extension of its GPI tracker will cover all payment instructions sent across the network, Swift said in a statement. The introduction of the unique end-to-end -end transaction reference in all payment instructions will be effected through the mandatory annual standards update in November. 2021. Swift GPI improves customer experience by increasing speed, transparency and automatically provides status updates to all GPI banks involved in any GPI payment chain, it said. If you are carrying out building work personally, it is very important that you understand how the building regulatory system and material applies to your situation as you are responsible for making sure that the work complies with the building regulations. If you are employing a builder, the responsibility will usually be theirs, but you should confirm this at the very beginning. You should also bear in mind that if you are the owner of the building, it is ultimately you who may be served with an enforcement notice if the work does not comply with the regulations. Some kinds of building projects are exempt from the regulations, however generally if you are planning to carry out building work as defined in Regulation 3 of the building regulations, then it must comply with the building regulations. Plastic domes can be produced from a quality plastic called plexiglass. Its qualities are closer to glass. Its light permeability doesn't change with time. Its surface is hard and smog and dust do not stick to or bake onto the surface. Each rain completely rinses it, making it self-cleaning. The surface is scratch-resistant against flying dust in strong wind. It has excellent optical characteristics and the ability to collect sunlight and send it down the tube. It doesn't age under UV rays or temperature changes or moisture. Its disadvantage is, however, a higher price. Some producers don't use a dome, but instead, use a roof window to which they then attach a sun tunnel tube. This is an interesting solution, but only for spaces where a lower amount of sunlight is enough. The flat surface of a window reflects 30% of the light away from the sun tunnel at the roof level. Smog and dust stick more easily to its flat surface and it's necessary to keep it clean. The Global Nutrition Summit will take stock of commitments made to date, celebrate progress toward global goals on nutrition, and announce new commitments to accelerate the global response to malnutrition. The event is open to governments, civil society, multilateral agencies, private foundations, and companies. After a decade of decline, the recent news that global hunger is on the rise, with the number of undernourished people increasing from 777 to 815 million in 2021, signals the urgent need for action. During a time of political change around the globe, this event is an opportunity for world leaders to make new pledges and commit to upholding prior ones. Another important aspect of maximizing your career potential is to network. The network of a professional is sometimes considered as his or her the second salary. Having a cordial relationship with colleges, the company's customers and even the company's competitors may enhance your career. If you have a number of people on your network, you will be able to keep an ear to the market position as well as new career opportunities and prospects. This is a tricky aspect, but if carried out right, it can work wonders for your profession. 
This will not only ease the initial hesitation anyone has about grouping with existing members, as well as ensure that your interaction levels have increased or at least exist with other individuals. He scolded himself for being so tentative. He knew he shouldn't be so cautious, but there was oh, sixth sense telling him that things weren't exactly as they appeared. It was thought weird chill thought, rolls up your neck and mokes the hair stand on end. He knew that being so tentative could end, up costing him the job, but he learned thought listening to his sixth sense usually kept him from, getting into oh, lot of trouble. Early times the Indian subcontinent appears to hove provided on attractive habitat for, human occupation. Toward the south it is effectively sheltered by wide expanses, of ocean, which tended to isolate it culturally in ancient times, while to the north it is protected by the, massive ranges of the Himalayas, which also sheltered it from the Arctic winds and the air, currents of Central Asia. Only in the northwest and northeast is there easier access by land, and it was through those two sectors that most of the early contacts with the outside world took place. The materials available for a reconstruction of the history of India prior to the 3rd century, BCE, are almost entirely the products of archaeological research. Traditional and textual, sources, transmitted orally for many centuries, are available from the closing centuries of, the second millennium BCE, but their use depends largely on the extent to which any passage, can be dated or associated with archaeological evidence. For the rise of civilization in the Indus Valley and for contemporary events in other parts of the subcontinent, the evidence of archaeology is still the principal source of information. Russia's climate is extreme, with forbidding winters that have several times famously saved the country from foreign invaders. Although the climate adds a layer of difficulty to daily life, the land is a generous source of crops and materials, including vast reserves of oil, gas, and precious metals. That richness of resources has not translated into an easy life for most of the country's people, however, indeed, much of Russia's history has been a grim tale of the very wealthy and powerful few ruling over a great mass of their poor and powerless compatriots. Great Britain made its first tentative efforts to establish overseas settlements in the 16th century. Maritime expansion, driven by commercial ambitions and by competition with France, accelerated in the 17th century and resulted in the establishment of settlements in North America and the West Indies. By 1670 there were British American colonies in New England, Virginia, and Maryland and settlements in the Bermudas, Honduras, Antigua, Barbados, and Nova Scotia. Jamaica was obtained by conquest in 1655, and the Hudson's Bay Company established itself in what became northwestern Canada from the 1670s on. Humans play a key role in the biosphere, with the large human population dominating many of Earth's ecosystems. 3. This has resulted in a widespread, ongoing mass extinction of other species during the present geological epoch, now known as the Holocene extinction. The large-scale loss of species caused by human influence since the 1950s has been called a biotic crisis, with an estimated 10% of the total species lost as of 2007. 6. At current rates, about 30% of species are at risk of extinction in the next hundred years.
There are some 250 million cars in America, 250 million cars in the country with just over 300 million people. And most of those vehicles, of course, are gas-powered. This poses a huge challenge given the limited supplies of oil and the growing urgency of the global warming crisis, but there is good news, according to our guests today. And that is we have the know-how and the technology to build sleek, fast automobiles that don't use gasoline. These vehicles of tomorrow are powered by hydrogen, electricity, biofuels, and digital technology. And they already exist. So what's stopping us from putting them on the roads? Our guests today will help answer that. For all his fame and celebration, William Shakespeare remains a mysterious figure with regards to personal history. There are just two primary sources for information on the Bard, his works, and various legal and church documents that have survived from Elizabethan times. Naturally, there are many gaps in this body of information, which tells us little about Shakespeare the man. Lowry is famous for painting scenes of life in the industrial districts of northwest England in the mid-20th century. He developed a distinctive style of painting and is best known for his city, landscapes peopled with human figures, often referred to as matchstick men. He painted mysterious unpopulated landscapes, brooding portraits and the unpublished marionette works, which were only found after his death. Milk production, i.e., lactation, is a major component of reproduction in mammals. In contrast to all other animals, mammals including primitive mammals, such as the duckbill platypus, and the spiny anteater nourish their offspring with a liquid that is secreted by specialized glands. Milk production and secretion are complex, multistage processes that are controlled by several hormones, the most important of which are prolactin and oxytocin. There are few studies on research training programs within the realm of Asian American health disparities. The existing literature on training programs tends to emphasize broad components such as mentorship and an examination of the community and academic partnership. Moreover, the current, available literature pertains mostly to clinical practitioners such as nurses and doctors in residency, rather than researchers. Few articles employed quantitative evaluation methods, because most of these evaluations were limited to a low number of participants. Group-based microfinance schemes attempt to harness the collective power of mutual support with members pooling their savings and making small loans to each other so that they can set up small businesses. Most aim to improve the economic power of and employment opportunities for women in their immediate community, and many aim to confront ingrained discriminatory attitudes to women. Some aim to facilitate the attendance of girls at school and change attitudes to the paid employment of women outside their homes. Menopause is characterized by greatly diminished levels of a group of steroid, reproductive hormones called estrogens. Estrogens travel through the bloodstream and exert widespread physiological effects on organ growth and development. Approximately 25% of postmenopausal women take supplemental estrogens to alleviate unpleasant symptoms of menopause, a practice called hormone replacement therapy. For example, HRT decreases the risk of cardiovascular disease and osteoporosis but may increase the risk of cancer.
The World Health Organization has been working with ministries of health and other stakeholders of Pacific Island countries to build climate-resilient health systems, although a disease-specific approach is useful initially, in the long run a comprehensive, intersectoral program is required. As recommended by WHO, this program should address i. health governance and policies tackling climate risks, 2. health information, integrated surveillance and climate early warning systems, and 3. preventive and curative services. Radon is a naturally occurring, colorless, odorless, and tasteless radioactive gas derived from the decay of thorium and uranium, which are common elements found in rock and soil. Radon gas becomes entrapped in houses and other buildings by seeping into cracks in foundations or basements or by entering through sump pumps or other drainage systems. Though most people have heard of radon, very few test their homes for the radioactive gas. One study reported that 82% of respondents had heard of radon but only 15% had tested for radon.